what is artificial intelligence why you should be taking it seriously as a career option and how you can get into the data science or machine learning career that's the goal of this because i didn't get any introduction i'll just give an introduction of data mites i work for data mites as a chief data scientist data mites is a, a global training institute based in netherlands i'm from netherlands as well so uh, i work very closely with the data mites management and data mites also has a lot of other initiatives and one of the initiatives is reaching students right and uh, data mites is more than two and a half years old company and uh, spread in netherlands us uk india okay and the headquarters is actually in bangalore so um, so this is a quick agenda so what is data science as well as machine learning and artificial intelligence at the very high level so we understand what is it right and then the next topic will be why and then how how do you pursue how can you pursue the, the career in data science that's me um much thinner than that it's 10 years before photo have some years of experience predominantly working in innovation machine learning artificial intelligence i'm based in netherlands i worked there for more than 8 years and i have my company in netherlands i'm an entrepreneur now past 4 years and we have a delivery team in bangalore so we do solutions delivery in machine learning and ai for uk and european clients mostly i'm from i did my mba from iim ahmedabad and another mba from university of amsterdam i'm currently pursuing my phd in data science so what so what is data science anyone have any idea about data science or machine learning anyone here who has some knowledge anyone okay all right so this is a very high level thought provoking slide how long the life was on planet earth and i'm not looking for a precise number because no one knows it how long is given over that that's not given it's not visible any anyway. 2.5 billion years can take it your your take 5 uh, 500 million years we don't know where we start but the evolution is such a long process it millions billions millions of years to evolve we as a human being as of now we consider ourselves as very intelligent smarter of course we are smarter because we are able to jump to other planet and terraform it I mean, basically we are trying to make a mars as an another earth and hopefully we don't screw that as well so we are definitely intelligent and we are very smart when compared to dinosaurs or any organism which walked the planet the question is how do you even get that smarter in less than 10 years 10000 years what do you talk about the human history all over gods including rama krishna jesus everyone is in this kind of dream isn't it and you know anything before 10 years we only have fossils we can only make stories out of it right so it's a big question even in the research community how do you even become such smart in in such a short period of 10000 years when there are animals who lived millions of years are still animals what's the longest like oldest animal still living with us anyone a, a creature uh, which is still living with us cockroach cockroach fantastic Who was that that's good the so cockroach has been there for more than 350 million years even more and it is still the same damn cockroach isn't it we become very smart we don't know how but we are now in a in a place in a in a position to recreate the intelligence okay i don't take much time on this i'll just go on a few things 
you need to know about artificial intelligence, any subject you study, anything you learn, you should be knowing who started it, whose idea is it. That gives you a lot of groundedness, so you know where it started, why it started, and how is it right now. So in that note, Mr. John McCarthy is one of the professors who actually invented the, coined the word artificial intelligence, which we now know. We are talking about machine intelligence, a, a machine acting as a human, making decisions. The idea was started in 1955 by a Professor John McCarthy. That's that. And now, a deep learning or artificial intelligence now led by a couple of professors, notable ones because you are looking for a career point of view. So, he is Yanakud. He is a chief artificial intelligence scientist at Facebook. He is a very well known professor as well and a researcher in this domain. And Jeffrey Hinton is heading the Google Brain, which is considered as the most smartest machine on the planet as of now, which has been fed by the entire Google data. There are many different areas in artificial intelligence, which could become a career path for you. you heard of a driverless car? Driverless car? Pretty sure. It's an interactive workshop. Please say something. Driverless car? Driven one? No? Okay. Can it drive in Bangalore? No. This side is pretty calm. Can a driverless can drive in Bangalore? It's a very constant dog. But the truth is yes, and it can do much better than humans. A driverless can can drive anywhere, including Bangalore, better than humans. Because it is not written by a set of rules. It can learn from the way we are learning, and once it is learned, um, it doesn't have this adventurous stride, so it performs well. And it's, it's, it's driverless car beats human in every terrain. Okay? <clears throat> so computer vision forms one of the very critical aspect of driverless car. And it's a career option because uh, we need a lots of engineers to work on this area. Driverless car is already in production. In US, there are certain areas, certain fields that use driverless cars. In most of the other countries, it's just that politically uh, things are not right yet, but very soon you will see a driverless car taking over. Very much. Okay? And once it happens, we need a lots of workforce to work, engineers, computer engineers, to work on delivering these solutions at the production level. We have natural language processing. How many know Alexa? Okay. Google Assistant. Hey Google. Okay Google. All right. So these are all natural language processing. So it can actually listen to you and convert your voice into text and then make sense out of it and come back with solutions, answers. You can literally talk to a machine and that comes under natural language processing. It's a huge field. In the future, not future, when it's a future, we're talking about just few years, maybe next couple of years, you will not be literally using your mouse and keypads and, and stuff, doing stuff with the computers. As of now, you're still using mouse, keyboard to literally give input to a computer, that will completely change. So the man-machine interaction is already in a very, uh, 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 in, a, in a form where you can actually talk to a machine. It takes few more years to make this technology available to everyone. Alexa is one of them. You talk to Alexa, you talk to Google Assistant. It's already, we are talking to machines. And it's just that every other form, including this computer, will become a, a casual interaction with the machine. That all comes under natural language processing. Machine learning, decision making, and robotics are also the field. And this workshop is about machine learning in more detail. So I'll cover it when I when I when I'm there. This slide may not make much sense for you because you don't have much understanding of AI. AI is a human fascination or human 
beings want to recreate the intelligence. That's artificial intelligence. Once you really think of you as a human being, we have many facilities, many faculties. You have eyes to see, you can hear, you can walk, you can comprehend, you can make decisions, you can feel, sensitive. So each of these fields will become a big domain in AI and everything is going to its own pace. They become every single domain. Right? Machine learning is a field of making uh, learning from the data. How do you learn? How do you learn? How do you write your exams? How? Just listen to the lectures, read the material. All right. There's a lot of data. You, you actually read it, hopefully understand a bit of it, and then you can say that I learned something. In a similar manner, machine can learn from data, and that field is actually machine learning. And that's one of the significant area where you're looking forward as a career option for you. I'll just tell you a very quick example of machine learning. I don't have this code because it's in here, but I think I can make you understand by just telling, uh, you know, what is it? How many of you buy stuff from Amazon? Or I should ask the question differently. Anyone here who did not buy anything from Amazon? Anyone here? I don't see hands. Okay. No one who did not buy anything from Amazon? Did not buy anything from Amazon. Okay. So now please raise hands who bought things from Amazon. So what are the other people? It's only two states possible, isn't it? Either you buy, you don't buy. Is there any middle state? It basically means you are not involved. Come on. All right. Thank you. How many haven't returned anything in Amazon? The people who don't buy are not qualified anyway. Okay, good. I see a lot of people haven't returned anything from Amazon. Really? Okay. But if you look at US stats, Amazon US. Even in India, it's almost the same. Maybe you are not really buying things more aggressively. Still, students, maybe. In US, returns become a very big problem because you have 30 days return policy, right? Just take a case study, a scenario where a teenage people like you, or you know, you're not teenagers, or you're already about 20, right? BCA. Anyone teenage here? Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, as a youngsters, right? So it becomes a fashion nowadays that you don't reuse the same accessories. If you have a bag, if you have whatever girls' accessories, would you like to reuse it for 10 events? No, because you know you share your pictures in Facebook and Twitter, and uh, it's not really nice to reuse your bags and gadgets, whatever you have, accessories, all right? So it becomes so easy for them simply buy it, use it for a party or an event, return it in the morning, isn't it? Your return policy, no questions asked. We can't do that, right? Well, forget about your morals and ethics, that anyway comes later. When you look at the AI, then we realize that morals and ethics are really some kind of, you know, constraints we put by ourselves. But taking that from the equation, there is a very good incentive for anyone to simply return it back, isn't it? And also it saves a lot of shelf space. How many bags you want to buy? How many shoes you want to buy? Stuff. You can return it. Use it and return it. That becomes a huge problem in the US especially. And uh, Amazon makes billions of dollars of loss. What do you do? If you are Amazon, how can you handle this? It's not meeting your specs, you would like to return it. So return policy is necessary. But how do you stop the exploitation? I'll see how much Gordon City University people are creating. Come up with solutions. 
How do you stop it? It's a common sense question. Yes. Blackness the people, all right? Good. Thank you. More? Especially the female segment is exploited in US. India, I don't know, but uh, in US. Out of this 1 billion, maybe 800 million losses coming from females, actually. <clears throat> How do you stop it? No returns? Yeah, then they'll find some other site to buy which has returns. You don't want to lose the business. You want to have the business, but still only, see, return policies require. There are certain genuine, a lot of genuine reasons you return the product. If you take it off, then your business is dead. So return policy is required. How do you stop exploitation? How do you stop the people who have no intention of buying it, but they just buy it because uh, they can return it? How do you stop? Garden City, how do you stop? You are going to be a future professionals. Isn't it? Yes, please. By seeing how many times they exchange, maybe once or twice a month, maybe acceptable. By everything great of exchange. Okay, so once or twice. Right, so it's the same thing like blacklisting people or restricting their number of returns. What do you need to open a new account in Amazon? An email? Does it cost anything? Then how do you stop? I can open up 20 accounts right now, isn't it? 4 returns per account. I can do 8 returns. If I want more, I can open up more accounts. Alright. <clears throat> there are many different ways you can stop by looking at you know, <clears throat> like what you said. In US, you can still identify a person because they buy from credit card. In India, we use cash and delivery, so you don't know who is buying what. But in US, predominantly 80% of the purchases is made from credit cards, which basically contains your email and age and all the information. So we can still use those kind of things. Right? <clears throat> if you can actually identify which kind of product, which kind of customer, Right, returning from which location because it varies from location to location and also varies from age. If you grow older, we don't exploit things. I did a lot of exploitation. I traveled with the trains with the tickets. At my time, we are traveling with trains. Right. In the younger age, you do exploit because you think it's fun. Right. As you grow older, you don't do it. Somehow you feel oh, it's not correct. Right. So it depends on age, it depends on gender, it depends on a location, it depends on product, it depends on many different factors. If we can find a pattern, if we can make some rules, all right, like women, bags, whatever, if the customer is less than 25 years age, no return, all right. But we can't put all these things in the website because that becomes messy. Written policy is 30 days, no change in it. When someone orders it, you can send a mail saying, hey, uh, this order does not have return, if you want to continue, continue, otherwise it will be cancelled. Sounds nice? So if you can make rules, like this category, this customer, this age group, whatever it is, and you can have many number of rules, and you put it in the software, the software will take care. Okay? Is it possible? Workable? Possible? Yes, it's possible. But the challenge is, well, you have so many millions of products and millions of different combinations. If you start writing rules, you land up writing thousands, maybe ten thousands of rules. That becomes really a big task and also keep updating the rules because things changes. Every month you have different new rules, new, new products, new exploitations. All right. Is it possible to write business rules every week and keep on updating the software? It's not a practical solution. Maybe you can do it for certain things but not for the entire Product, uh, products we have. If you look at it from a machine learning perspective, which is the demo I actually have, I'll tell you, you can give all this data to an algorithm, a machine learning algorithm, which is super simple because you're not designing an algorithm, algorithms are already there. We just have to funnel the data to the algorithm using any language. How many are developers here? PCA means you should be knowing some computers, right? 
C language. Okay. C. Okay. We have a problem raising hands. So we know we nod. We are known as nodding people, Indians. All right. Okay. So you can use some, some any programming language. Python is being very popular, so it's an uh, suggestion for me to start doing Python from now. We have a lot of open sources available. We can use Python to actually get the data into an algorithm. And then algorithm learns from the data, as data. It could be any combination, it's an algorithm, it will learn, of course. We are not manually doing anything. And then a new order comes in, this algorithm will tell you whether it will be exploited or not. Sounds nice? Super nice it is actually super simple in implementing when compared to what you are trying to do with the business rules. You cannot write hundreds of business rules. But this algorithm, you are not really writing anything. You simply stream the data right into the algorithm, it gets trained, and then it's ready to predict. And you can even automate this. Every week, you can retrain the algorithm. You are not doing anything, it does automatically by itself. This is machine learning. This one simple use case, you can see a company like an Amazon can save a billion dollars. What's a billion dollar Indian rupees? Anyone? Take 70 rupees per dollar. Like one dollar 70 rupees. What's a billion dollars in Indian rupees? Sorry? Yeah, I take it in, we speak in lakhs and crores, right? Sorry? One billion dollars. How many rupees? Seven hundred crores. <clears throat> a simple algorithm can save you seven hundred crores. Right? This is the reason. It's not just Amazon. You can think about bank giving a loan. A bank giving a loan. Application process take a hell of time because they look into all kinds of things. See what's your salary, what's your collateral, this and that. This can be also machine learning. You can simply feed the data of the default customers and, and the good customers. Machine learns it and it is approving the loans. You might be knowing that India is becoming a, not a good news. We are becoming a capital of cancer. There's so many, so many cancer patients popping up everywhere. You might be knowing some celebrities have cancer, but in general, we are racing towards getting the first place in cancer. Very bad thing. But the problem with the cancer is you only know this, uh, you have cancer after you have symptoms. And when you have symptoms, it's already too late. And you're counting months. It's very sad thing. But if you diagnose the cancer before, then you can simply get cured. Stage one, stage two, no problem. Can be cured. And we have foundations giving you financial support, no problem. The problem is you are not diagnosing before and it is not coming for the older people, it is, there has no, no, uh, there is absolutely, it can come to anyone, from a kid to a, an older person, from male to female, all kind of things, because we don't know what's the real source. People say that it is food and whatever it is, but still we really don't know what's triggering this. It could be radiation, it could be, we don't know, alright. But diagnosing will help you. But if you want to really go for a cancer diagnosis, it costs a lot of money. 10,000 bucks, 50,000 bucks. Not many people can afford it. If you have a family of five members, it costs you a few lakhs to diagnose cancer. Will you do that? No, you're not going to spend a few lakhs to diagnose. Especially you know that the chances that you have cancer is 0.15%. Right? But when you have cancer, you found the symptoms, you are going to die. How about if a machine learning can diagnose the cancer, you don't need an ecologist, you don't need any doctor. The price can be cut down from 15,000 to 500, for example. Then you will do it. Everyone can go for cancer test just to make sure that I don't have cancer. So every time you, you hear a news, you might think that maybe I have it, maybe not. Maybe my mother has it, maybe my father has it. Keeps on going, but we don't take any action because it's expensive. Machine learning can really cut down the cost of diagnosis by 100, 200 times. These are only a few examples I'm telling you. This is the reason why machine learning has become such a huge popular uh, field in the past two years. And there are literally 2.7 million jobs available in machine learning. In India, last year, which is 2018, 50,000 of the machine learning jobs were not filled. They couldn't find professionals. That's one of the reasons I'm here. The one of the reasons I'm here 
we have a huge resource problem for machine learning and data science and artificial intelligence. And this is a fantastic field for you. And all the use cases I'm telling you, every industry has its own machine learning use case. Everything is going to be replaced by machine, machine learning in the near future, a couple of years. It's already done it. Top 10 percent of the companies are doing it. The rest of the companies are following suit. Okay? <laughs> Does it explain? Do you understand what's machine learning now? I level. I'm not doing any coding here. I level you understand. It's very simple. You give the data, it learns from the data, and it can predict. And it can create wonders in many areas, including finance, banking, healthcare, retail. You name it, you have a machine learning use case over there. So demo? It's actually supposed to be a hands-on demo, but that's fine. <coughs> So I'm going to pass this one because I explained a few things. These are already existing uh, um, solutions. In UK, an hospital uses AI to predict heart attack or heart disease. And it's been very clearly established that it is 100 times more efficient than any cardiologist on the planet. 100 times more efficient than doctor. And it works for free, of course. You just have to pay a little server cost. Okay? And those are the references. I'll share the slides to you, so you can actually go and read those references uh, from where the articles have been taken. Law and order. You can simplify the criminals with machine learning pretty much easy. Using the patterns, using the behavior. I'm not talking about facial recognition. That's also a part of it. But, you know, by just looking at the patterns of their behaviors, you could simply identify a terrorist. It's, it's, it's pretty, pretty straightforward case. And there are people using it in UK. Retail, Amazon, what you told is one use case in machine learning. There are probably thousand use cases possible in Amazon itself. Thousand different areas you can apply machine learning in Amazon itself. Like tracking your customer behavior, right? Recommendation engine, everything comes under machine learning. You see that in YouTube, when you see something, right? You, the recommended videos are very relevant for you, right? It actually picks up from that. If you watch, um, I don't know, what's your favorite channels? Sorry? Sorry? TEDx. Oh, okay, that's nice. That's very productive. Now tell me the truth. Okay. <laughs> that's good. But let's say TEDx. You watch TEDx. And then further recommendations will be in the similar lines. If you watch something like dinosaurs, you see all the dinosaurs which has been shown to you as a recommended videos. Right? In a similar manner, if you buy something in Amazon, it will start recommending you. It's already there to some extent. It's going to be even more. We can literally track the customer requirement even if we, before the customer knows it. We can push the sales. That's also machine learning. Is. And there are a lot many people. This one I really like. Maybe it's relevant. Uh, how is the placements here? Pretty good. Okay. So you see the companies put this minimum percentage of no, your schooling or graduation. 65% is minimum required from your LKG, something like that. Alright? For getting a job. Do you think it makes sense? It makes sense for pre teachers, yes, because uh, that's our <laughs> that's our career, right? <clears throat> but literally, I worked in Netherlands for eight years, I worked in uh, in India as a program in Netherlands for NTPC for about four years. I roamed across India. I'm currently working with all the different regions in the world. I see that the people who are not really good performers, at least not your generation, our generation, are actually performing great in, in professional career. Right? The people who don't have great academics are doing fantastic in a professional career. Right? This is a very common pattern we see. But we still have we still have this minimum mass criteria. The reason being, you cannot just post a job and there are so many thousands of applications coming in, it's difficult for you to, difficult for you to filter it out. Right? So we put a minimum criteria, 70%, 65%, so it reduces the application. We are doing it because of the company's constraint. We don't have resource to evaluate thousand applications. We can only evaluate 100, maybe 50. So we are putting this hard criteria. But this problem can be easily solved with machine learning because Machine learning can go into your company's data of your employee's performance, 
Every employee in the company will get the appraisal, like you get an assessment, exams. So, any company you take on the planet Earth, they'll have annual appraisals. They'll simply say, uh, are you performing great or not great or whatever it is. Right? You have that data, you have all the other data about education and other things. You can just feed this data to a machine learning algorithm and use this algorithm to filter out the applications. Then you don't have to put any cost, you know, minimum marks and such. And it also eliminates the biasing. All of the Bangalore here? Anyone not from Bangalore? Okay. All right. Okay. That's good. How many are from Tamil Nadu, Chennai? Or uh, Tamil Nadu in general? A few. Nothing. No one from here, Tamil Nadu? Next day. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm, I'm from Chennai. I mean, I'm born in Chennai, brought up in Andhra Pradesh. It's a very common phenomenon that, you know, if a if a, if a, if a Tamil guy gets an interview and the manager is also Tamil, he got a job, that's all. No further requirements needed. Once you say I'm a Tamil guy, you become a brother. You call Allah and then nothing else comes into picture. You get a job. Everyone else is like kind of evaluated correctly and they'll be rejected. This is not just India phenomena. Happens across the globe. Germans have this, French have this, Danish have this, Americans recently have it, thanks to Trump. Right. So the human biasing is always there. So when we evaluate a person, we evaluate by looks, we evaluate by religion, caste, language, a lot of things. But machine learning doesn't have it. So it can actually do a proper recruitment of the resources. It's a very big use case and I am a bit a big advocate of it. I'm working with Wipro on this. And if everything goes nice, uh, these kind of algorithms will actually come into picture. It creates a fair marketplace for hiring, right talents. That is what? What is machine learning? And why? I'll keep it short. Is it already sold? Do you want to become a data science engineer? Yes or no? Anyone who don't want to become an engineer? You just twist the question to get the right answer. You are basically resistant to raise hands. Alright.
That means you love your work. Alright? Not because it pays money. You are interested. If you are that kind, and capability can be built. Data science is relatively new field. If you are good in math, you can take trainings, formal trainings, you can learn by yourself. There are a lot of open source available. You can get there. You can get to the level where you can be employed as a data science professional. Capability can be built. You have you gain this for. I see that Garden City is one of the reputed organization uh, colleges, universities in Bangalore. So prop basically means that you, you have capability and you can actually build more professional capability. <coughs> Money. Well, that's the best part. Data science are highest paid. They are even paid more than the doctors and any other professions in US. In the next slide is well, this is what I say. Why data science? Well, simple. High salaries, interesting work. Again, if you are interested in data, of course. And global opportunities. No one can stop your visa. If you are a data scientist, you are through. It's as simple as that. Because of a huge scarcity of data science profession. If you are a data scientist, you are welcome anywhere in the world. Future proof. About 2 million jobs. 2 million is 20 lakhs jobs will be disrupted by machine learning in the next generation. You know the BPO jobs? A BPO, it will be completely gone. 95% of the BPO jobs will disappear in the next two years. And at, only in Bangalore, there are about 6 lakhs people working in BPO. I don't know what's going to happen to them. But data science and machine learning is future proof because this is actually the future. Okay? This is my machine learning career. This is some quick stats to you. Uh, I don't think it's visible to you from this far. So in US, the salaries can go up to 300, 260 to 300k dollars, which is about a few crores in Indian money. Even in India, entry level jobs have a slight gap. This is a data collected from LinkedIn as well as Indeed. Last year's statistics, I did it myself. So it's actually from LinkedIn. This is entry level jobs for data scientists in Bangalore. It's Bangalore, right? Yes, it's in Bangalore. It's all Bangalore. I didn't put it there, but it's a manual statistics. Oh, yeah, I also have other things. Chennai, Hyderabad, and Pune, yes. <clears throat> so you, you can get a salary anywhere between from 3 lakhs to 8, 10 lakhs as an entry level, fresher. Okay? <clears throat> and that's about high salaries. Is that okay? I mean, can you start with 5 lakhs? I always say to the people that do not look at the salary. Of course, it's one of the criteria, but you should first of all learn and then earn. If you choose something which is paying you high right now, maybe your growth will be very much limited and there will be a lot of other side effects. Choose a career which has an option to learn more and more and more. That should be your goal. So from that perspective, the salaries which they are paying right now in India, Bangalore is pretty lucrative. Interesting work. Like solving puzzles? If you like solving puzzles, you'll definitely like data science because it's almost like solving puzzles and they're very complex puzzles which can give you billions of dollars as a profit for the company. So people will respect you. Really, data scientists are highly respected in organizations. If I say I'm a data scientist, I can even get an appointment to a, a PM or a CM easily. That's the situation as of now because data science they need in every damn field. <coughs> There are, it's a multidisciplinary area. You need to have a programming skills, you need to have a math skills, you also need to have domain expertise if you are finance. But this can be taken from the other colleagues. But the math and the programming skills is really a, a, a combination of skills you need for a data science profession. How much time do I have? quick split of industries, hospitality, this and that, and banking seems to be the highest, but other industries including retail is picking up. Global opportunities, I have put some numbers, uh, 2.7 million jobs by 2020 in US alone, and in India it's about 5 to 6 lakhs, it's not there. And this is interesting, 50,000 jobs in 2018 is not being filled in India, it's vacant, they are not able to find the right professional, it is, it's been published in Times India. <clears throat> and the increase of this demand is like 28% year on year. Every year, the demand is increasing by 28%, which means 
when it is a massive number, if you compound it for next two years, uh, the job will go, you know, exponentially higher. So this is the status set. One point million jobs has been globally will be disrupted. Disrupted means killed by AI, right? But AI itself is future proof because that's the new field which is killing the other field. Last thing, how do you get there? That's very important. How many want, don't want to get there? Okay, how many want to get there? Again, same thing, okay. <laughs> so, learning, same circles, of course. Learning, my colleague will forward you to uh, the coordinator here. A lot of resource, open resource, free stuff. Uh, even data mice has a lot of free stuff can be extended to universities, right? But they have, they, the link should be the university website, I think, uh, Ratna knows it. So you can get a free access to a lot of uh, machine learning uh, videos and, and, you know, <coughs> materials to actually start learning by yourself. It's all self-learning. A formal training is also very helpful, but self-learning it itself is pretty good because when you are at a final years, when you are attending a campus interviews, even if you know 10% of the machine learning, you will be higher because market is really dry of people in machine learning area. Even if you know ABC of machine learning, that's good enough. Right? ABC in sense really fundamentals clear, that's good enough. Right? So learning, uh, thanks to technology, you have YouTube, you have uh, uh, many other channels, I even recommend Andrew N.G., who is also is the founder of Google Brain, and he has his own channel in Coursera. Coursera is actually also co-founded by him. So I'll send you the links. As a student, you can get a free access to Coursera. Normally, they will have to pay per month, but for students, you send your ID cards, whatever university it is, you'll get a free access to Coursera. Coursera is a very credible source of learning. Okay, it's free. Internship. You don't have to. I don't know how is this. How rigorous is the course? But if possible, past last six months or whatever, if you can get to internship, or maybe university can themselves arrange an internship because in Germany that's what happens. Even in Netherlands where I come from, uh, usually last year or last six months is internship. They actually push to the industries so that they can actually learn from the industry itself, the job itself. Internships are very important, and uh, I, I, I also recommend the coordinators and management to look into the internship for possibilities. Job comes next. So do not really worry about jobs. Right? Jobs anyway comes. So no one can stop it. Learning is important. Internship is, gives you more flexibility for learning because when you enter a job, they're paying a salary for you, you have to deliver what is what is, has to be delivered. So you don't have much of free time to learn. Internship have a lot of free time to learn. You can talk to many people within the companies. All right? And you can, you, you can negotiate internship with Wipro and PCS and big companies. They will be happy to, to do this because they know that they couldn't find the right talents easily in the market. If they can encourage the internship, from the internship, they know who are the best, they can hire. So it's also a win-win situation. So internship is something which management as well as students has to push towards in this area. <coughs> projects, uh, two projects. If you don't have projects, you can ask us. We can give you projects. Uh, projects are real projects where you have data and you have business problem like what you saw in Amazon returns, then you actually solve it. You literally solve it. You actually create a model which can predict. Right? So those are projects. If you do projects, you gain confidence. You gain confidence, you'll be more you'll be more clear where you are heading in your career. Jobs. Then comes the jobs. This is the hierarchy. Right? This is how you do it. Learn, internship, projects, and then jobs. Okay? There are different roles which I am not going to go through in detail. So there are uh, data science developers who develop the stuff, they don't interact with the business problem. Given the data, they can develop the algorithm, they can code the algorithm. Those so are data science developers. Analysts, we have a nice lady over there, but it can be done by voice as well. Just a picture there. Okay. Analysts is actually analyzing the outputs and giving some reports and, and you know business intelligence kind of roles. Researchers are the one who are mostly interested in research itself, about the algorithm, about the business problem. So they don't, they don't code, but they are the people who will decide what algorithm, what methodology to, to use to solve the problem. 
It's very interesting if you are more research oriented, if you are more numbers oriented, you like research, that's a very interesting field for you. Big data specialist, data science requires, certain data science requires big data. Big data, Hadoop, I know Hadoop, know that pretty much it's everywhere in your bus stops and everywhere. Hadoop is a technology for big data, it's one of the technologies. Big data is still there and it actually becomes a building block for your data science. Okay, that's something. Okay. And you have business person, which obviously you are not the person who is actually funding the projects. And then you have data scientist. No, that's a superman role. If you start as any of these fields, like a data engineer or a machine learning developer or whatever it is, over a period of time, that's what you're aiming for, data scientists. Data scientists are the people who can actually look at the business problem, manage the entire solution spectrum from defining the problem to delivering the solution and getting the value back and basically delivering value to the client, like a project manager. That's your uh, ultimate goal. And I can tell you, after you become data scientist, there are further like senior data scientist, whatever it is, chief data scientist, which is all, almost like your CEO level, C level, is chief data scientist. The future CEOs will be data scientists. If you look at the past, most of the sales people have become CEOs of any company. Steve Jobs, you know Steve Jobs, Apple, iPhone, is actually a sales guy. Is more into sales than technology. He's a visionary for sales. If you look at the past, many of the companies, the account managers, sales people over a period of time become CEOs for the company. The future is data scientists will become CEOs of the company because they know the pulse of the company. So basically, they are the one who are dictating how the business should work. So they become CEOs. It is not easy, it's already been everywhere that data scientists will be the most influential people in the organizations. And these are details about it, so I'm not going to read it out. I'll send this PDF to you so you can read by yourself. They have all individual roles, what they do, all right? There's a lot of information for you to, to, to see where you fit, because not everybody is safe. You have to see which role you actually fit. That's questions. Even if I ask question, no one is lifting their hands. Can I expect questions, not a city? Any question, there is no stupid question, you can ask any question, even organizers. Can you show the demo? You can go ahead and connect my laptop, then I can show you the quick demo, the real course how it works. Can anyone help me? Give a try, it doesn't work, it's okay. Uh, not okay. I can do it there, sir. Let me try. Leave it, leave it. Leave it, leave it. I'll try. I'll try there, sir. Please. Data scientist, huh? Data scientist and researcher. Oh, in that? What is wrong? Researchers are the people who only research on the business problem and the possible solutions to the approach. Data scientist is owning the entire project. From the question, problem, till delivering the solution is data scientist's responsibility. Researchers only come at the starting, defining the problems, and maybe at the end when you are evaluating the solution. That's researcher. Researcher is mostly a domain expert. Let's say I'm trying to block a, a fraud transaction. Yes, it is a fraud transaction. A credit card fraud transaction in in US is prevalent. You have a, you have a, a, a credit frauds or fraud transactions happening. Transactions happening, right? Machinery can actually stop it even before it happens. A researcher in this will be the person who has a very good knowledge about this frauds itself. So how it happens, what is the more it happens, these are the people who are called as researchers. Okay? Data scientist is holding the entire project. If you need any more details about a particular domain, he will contact researcher because he is a domain expert in that. Did that answer your question? Okay, thank you. Other questions? Yes, please. There are courses which, see basically what happens in internet, if you say I want to learn data science or machine learning, 
all the links which is popping up is visited. All the links being popping up are commercially motivated links. The people do some search engine optimization, they pay some stuff. These are mostly uh, kind of trying to drag you to pay something or otherwise you don't get a quality achievement. Right? So to answer your question, there are sources. As I said, Coursera is one of the good source. I have my own videos in YouTube. Databytes can also give you free accesses. All right, and that's where you can start. If you can afford, you can also go for a training. Okay, and then, as I always tell, only 30, 40 percent of the learning can come from courses. 60 to 70 percent of the learning is self, because this is a very new domain. You have to really practice, hit, try and hard, try, try and error, practice and practice to get to the level. Right? It is not like Java or other courses where you have a pretty much pretty standard design patterns and whose concepts you learn and get the job. The developers' jobs are not really great, I can tell you, because uh, you have a very clearly defined workflow and you have to do it exactly that way. It is not exciting anymore. Being a developer is not exciting. 95% people agree with me, developers who are already developers. But that's a pretty standard field. This is a new field. So 30-40% you can learn and rest is practice, practice. How many of you believe in horoscope? I guess none of you are married, right? Okay. Horoscope? No? Maybe your parents believe it, right? And you are forced to believe it. Okay. That's a sad thing, isn't it? Maybe not. Horoscope is actually data science 2000 years ago. It's actually machine learning. The stars you're looking at is your date of birth, right? Gregarian calendar, if you have fallen, is very faulty. Our ancient calendar, which is based on stars, is pretty much solid because they have no error. A million years, you might require a small correction. How many of you know that Gregarian calendar, every few hundred years, you have to completely change the calendar? Like, you can... About 10, 15 days should be removed to make it correct. Just show you. Not here. Sorry. Can I have the system here? Yeah. Is it internet connection? All right. So. I'll send you certain calendar dates where completely things are like 10 to 1 days are not there. You also see in your life that you have to correct it to get it correct. Stars are pretty much strong, all right. And then you have other things like your cash, your first name, last name. These are all your inputs, basically data. Someone I don't know who is that because we cannot trace back has done a very good job of looking at the happy couples, not happy couples, and with the parameters designed this also. This is not something you think as a a myth or whatever it is. It is a proper machine learning few thousand years ago. We can recreate it. Well, it may not be applicable right now because uh, things have changed. We are not doing the same work as we are doing as a cast basis. And technology leveled up many things. Men and women are equal. I can see the strength is also equal here. So, horoscope code may not be relevant, but you can recreate a horoscope with the new data and it becomes relevant again. So, you can actually create a 21st century machine learning horoscope. Very much possible. You just need a data of uh, couples with their happy or not. Not happy, diverse, you can get it from the diverse registry. Happy, not happy is very difficult. Everyone says that they are happy, but that's questionable, right? That's a trick. So if you can get the data, making a horoscope for 21st century is very much possible. It's not that difficult. Okay. <clears throat> I need an internet so that I can... Any questions? Is that a question or something? <laughs> Nothing is going to fall on the head, right? <laughs> yeah, I see some hope. That's okay, I don't need slides anymore. <laughs> So I'm going to use my data mice 
Flular. Still like it? I got the data into my work area. So the same data I showed you, which is basically a lot of orders and then you have a field called as return. So I got that in my in my notebook. And then I'm just to look at it. Um, there are many fields in it. So you have you have customer ID, sorry, you have row ID, order ID. Etc. Etc. To make it a small demo, what are the things you think are relevant? What are the things in this is influencing your return? 
what variables I can take. I want to take only three or four or five because it's a short demo. What do you think? Gender definitely? You know that. No, boys also exploit. A new phone comes into the market, you buy it and just play it for a couple of days and say, not working, overheating, retreat back. There's no intention of buying it in the first place. You just want to play with the new phone, new model. So, gender is definitely, gender along with the product is a good combination. Uh, some regions you have more exploitation, some regions might have less exploitation because of the culture, which is again influenced by the city. Okay? So I'm going to take uh, customer age, customer gender, city, and product subcategory as my inputs. Customer age, how oh, it is written? Customer underscore age. And then customer underscore gender, I guess. And then city. Products are category. This one. Copy and paste it. Oops, sorry. I'll type it out. Sub categories. So I have only taken four fields which is customer age, customer gender, city and uh, product subcategory. Anything else you think is relevant? This is good enough, we will, we will try with this. Machine learning algorithms cannot read text. You have to convert them into numbers. So the way we convert to the numbers, we call this label encoding. We simply give a number, for example, for male we give a zero and female we give a one. And for every city, we just give a number. Every category of the product, we give a unique number, kind of like ID, right? I'm going to do that. Model selection. Simply changing the city, replacing it with numbers. I'll also do the same thing for gender and subcategory. Hope there is no error in typing because I'm typing everything manually. Yeah. So I've converted I've converted the Converted the, the, the strings into numbers. Now I'm going to take my y as return. So now I have x and y. Till now I have done simply importing the data, selecting some x inputs, and also getting a y in the y. Now I'm going to just implement a, a machine learning algorithm called random forest. You can use many algorithms, many classifiers. Random forest is C plus one. Say from SKLearn, ensemble, import, random forest, classify, model is equal to random forest. It's taking time. <coughs>
Okay. Now I'll pass on the values to this. We call this as training. Very few lines, four lines to be more precise. Data preparation is some, something different. So that is the command of really machine learning coding kind of things. Only four lines. I have given a model X and Y so that it can learn. And then I passed on a new order values, which is a 21 year girl is placing an order from a city which ID is 150 and the, the product subcategory, I don't know if it's a bag or accessory, it's number, ID number is 10 and it's quickly telling me that this product will be returned. Okay? Let's also check the other side. Let's say there is a same city, same product, but there is another lady who, who is like 60 years age or 55 years age. Let's see what it says. Oh, it seems that, you know, even this product, this is perfectly matching. Even this lady is returning. So I'll keep this 25. I'll change it to, let's say, male. Okay? Now it's false. <coughs> okay? So very quick demo. This model is not being evaluated. We haven't done any efficiency. And that's all a part of your job, of course. But this shows you that a pretty small piece of code can learn from the data and then can predict. And the rest is simple software engineering. It's simply you have to write a small piece of software around it to plug it into your ordering system. You know, what is APIs? APIs, you see it guys. What is API? Application? Alright. So we can create an API out of this. You can simply wrap up this particular algorithm in a small code and you can simply pick one. You set the X. Order details, you get a reply saying whether it's written or not. Accordingly, you can do a number of things based on your business tools. You can simply send a mail saying, oops, we cannot, uh, 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 there is no written policy for this. You can do something else. That's about the business. But machine learning part is creating an algorithm which gets trained from the data and it predicts. This code, this file will be available to you. So my colleague will share it to you for your own experiment. Alright? That's a quick demo. This is my colleague. And then, any questions? I'm hungry as well. <laughs> I'm at lunch. Alright, so you can always reach me. I'll leave my number. WhatsApp is the best channel for me to reach. I love helping students because when I was studying in my colleges, um, I joined NTPC. NTPC is a national thermal power corporation. Good company, no compliance. It's a government company. Paid well. Road across India from Sikaroli, which is a kind of like a top of the area, hill station to Vishakapatnam, work in seven different plants, learn a lot of things. But you know, I always think that if I would have started this machine learning or AI, whatever data things, four years earlier, I would have been four years ahead of where I am right now. So I lost some good time on a career path, which is not really my interest. At that time, only thing mattered is. A government job so that I can get married. My parents were pushing me for that. And unfortunately, I cleared the exam. I joined the job. Right? And then it took me three and a half, four years. I mean, I realized within a one, one and a half year, but working as well as switching a career is not easy. Right? It took a lot of effort to get a GMAT score of 19%, which is the government between IMA and then the University of Amsterdam. Luckily, I came out of this NTPC. Lucky, just fortunate. Your just hard work doesn't help you, you should be a little fortunate as well. But I don't want this to happen to other students, at least in this generation, because now we are connected, we have social media, we are connected. So any help, any career guidance, guidance you want, you can, I cannot pick a call, but I will definitely reply any of the WhatsApp messages you send it to me. So that's my mobile number. So you can leave a WhatsApp message. It, it's, it's always active even if I'm not in India. I can come back to you in a few hours or within a day or two.
with the answer for it. Okay? Any questions? Shall I close? Close it, good enough. Thank you for the opportunity. I wish you all the best in your career.